Guys, uh, I don't know if you remember me, my name is Ryan Hotailing. Uh, I go to the United States Naval Academy, so that's obviously a good feat. Um, I graduated here last year, so um, right now I'm a plebe, which is also a freshman at the Naval Academy, so if you have any questions about that, just let me know. Ryan, what were you here at CBA last year? What was your rank? I was the brigade commander. Uh, I'm Sean Emmicks. I go to the University of Rochester. I do Navy ROTC. I'm a fourth class, which is similar to the plebe, and I went to CBA last year and graduated. I was the XO right under rank. My name is Jack Murphy. Um, I go to Clarkson. I'm in the Army. Um, and I'm a freshman at Clarkson. I graduated here with all of these guys last year, and I was a lieutenant colonel. Uh, morning, everybody. My name is Glenn Sauter. I'm a freshman up at Norwich University doing Army ROTC. Um, you're going to start to notice a trend. I graduated with all these guys. We're all seniors. We're seniors last year. And uh, I was the Brigade S4 Lieutenant Colonel. All right, my name is Nolan Field. I also graduated with all these guys. Big surprise. Class of 2021. I'm out at uh, RIT in Rochester. Uh, last year I basically ran on the social media as I was a captain, but my job was primarily making the school look good and all that. So it was fun. Happy to be back. Um, do we want to start with just like a rundown, or do you guys want to start? Or yeah. like questions? Whatever. Well, we can, I think we should just give them like a basic, just like five how, how about, how about, what are you guys, I don't know what this is going to be, so what do you guys choose, and you, we know your branch, what do you guys choose for the jobs that you want to take? Okay, so uh, at the academy, uh, I don't know how it works for everybody else, but pretty much your performance there determines like your order of merit. So uh, your grades, your performance in sports, uh, your aptitude, conduct, whether you get in like, trouble or not, that's what that means. Uh, everything goes into account your service selection assignment. So when you become a uh, first aid, like a senior at the academy, your like fall semester, uh, you're gonna get to choose. So you have like uh, there's aviation, uh, there's marine aviation, marine ground, uh, there's a SWO, uh, so that's just like uh, command on the ship, uh, nuclear SWO. So you deal with like uh, the nuclear reactors on carriers, and also while maintaining like a SWO type job. Uh, there's subs. Um, and there's also restricted line for those of you guys who are colorblind. Anybody out there? Uh, there's a restricted line for you guys. Uh, but right now, I'm hopefully going to go uh, aviation. Yeah, so uh, Navy ROTC is very similar to the Naval Academy in the sense that they're commissioning, which is becoming an officer into the same branch. But uh, the biggest difference between Navy ROTC and the Naval Academy is that Navy ROTC is split into two. Uh, it's split into two, and it's either Marine option or Navy option. So if you're a Navy option, you have the option of commissioning to, as Ryan said, aviation, submarine warfare, service warfare, or special warfare. And then if you choose the Marine option, you go to TBS, which is the basic school after you graduate college, and you learn how to become a platoon commander, an infantry platoon commander. And then based on your performance at TBS, you would receive an MOS there, uh, anything from infantry to supply to logistics. Um, yeah, at NRTC, very similar to the academy in terms of commissioning. It's all based on your performance, your GPA, your aptitude, uh, how well you do in your knowledge and your PRT. Um, that all determines what selection you're going to get for your job. Yeah, so Army ROTC is very similar. Um, <clears throat> the only difference I'd say between that and Army ROTC is you have a selection when you graduate from Army ROTC of three different service options, I guess. So you can go reserves, National Guard, or you can get active duty. So active duty is the one that most people try to get, and I'd say if you talk to anybody. Almost everybody wants to go infantry, active duty, and then get a ranking tab um, if you're talking to somebody from ROTC. So I guess that's really the only difference, but everything else is the same. What do you want to do? Oh, sorry. What do I want to do? I want to fly helicopters. There you go. All right. um, I won't add too much on what he said. Uh, we'll go into the kind of OML, so order merit list stuff, um, which really is what like, determines how high you get it. Order of merit is how they kind of determine who's who's best, who's not. It's kind of like how we have merits and stuff here, and that goes into your senior rank, uh, which you guys are freshmen. That'll come down the line. Um, but the people, essentially, how it works, the people who are higher up on that list, they get more of a choice in terms of what they want to do. Um, so, like people higher up, a lot of people want to go active duty. A lot of people want to go infantry. If you're really high on that list, you've got a lot more of a chance of going active duty in the country. Uh, but right now, uh, my plan is to go logistics.
I just want to add two lines real quick. So it's very similar in ROTC as it is to JROTC. So you know your involvement in sports at school, um, clubs, extracurricular activities. Each one has a specific order of merit list point value. So it's not you know or, um, it's not a merit like at CBA, but it does have a specific point value, and you do those things, they do add up over time. So it has a certain weight. <clears throat> yes, yes. So um, I know at school, Greek life is counted towards um, your order of merit list. And then I also know that you know, if you play an intramural sport, it's lower in the weighted list, but it does add to your position on that, that list. And a lot of it is uh, grades and ROTC. Uh, what, what's what I'm looking for? Performance in ROTC. All right, so I just got to tag on that. So if it's all dependent on the school you go to, just before we forget about that, every ROTC program has the distinction to run their program differently. The general basis is going to be the same, but I'll just give you an example there. Um, RIT weights things a little bit differently. It's a technical institute, so they tend to prioritize academics. They don't really care if you're in a fraternity. Um, it counts, but that's probably like one point, whereas being like a uh, submarine engineering major or something like that, that's impossible, is a lot more uh, heavily, heavily counted. So I'm not sure if there's ones like that, but I know ours is really academically based. Uh, a good example of that is the ROTC standard, once you're on scholarship, is a 2-0 um, to maintain. That's nationally, but RIT elevated that to a 2.5 just for their battalion. So. Uh, you just gotta, if you are interested in ROTC, uh, once you graduate, you just really should get into contact with the cadre there. It doesn't have to be formal, but they can let you know if there's something absurd. Um, nothing that's not going to be obtainable, but just to answer the question that was asked, um, we'll get more into this, but me and Glenn are both in a unit right now. We're both are locked into going into the reserves. We have scholarships called the Minuteman Scholarship that locks us in there. So. Uh, we'll talk more about that later, but basically I have really good cadre and they're going to send me to like pilot school and they're also considering some things like sniper school and stuff like that based on the performances that I've had this year. So um, I have some options, but hopefully I'm looking to fly helicopters like Jack or it's, it's tough as a freshman to kind of answer that question, but that's where I'm looking. You don't have to, I think that's another good thing to point out too. You don't have to have a solid plan going in of what you want to do. It's good to have an idea. But you won't branch, is what like we call it, um, until the beginning of your like the beginning half of your senior year. Uh, so you got quite a bit of time to really figure out what you want to do and get a little bit of experience. To backpedal a little bit too about something Nolan said about getting in contact with the cadre at each individual program. I know for me, I got a four-year scholarship. Um, the cadre at Clarkson had a big hand in getting me that scholarship. So I did an interview. Everybody has to do an interview. So I don't know anybody here is familiar with the West Point application. You have to get a you know nomination from a senator or a congressperson. It's not the same. You have to interview with a school. It can be any school for ROTC. And they conduct your interview. So if you do well, you, know, you can have as many interviews as you want. At least I know I had three. Um, but the one with the Clarkson cadre went the best. So he really wanted me to come to school there, so he really pushed for me to kind of move through that. I got my scholarship on the second board. There's three boards every year. So I got mine on the second board, and he really pushed for me to get through that board. So finding the right cadre at the right school also has a big, uh, it, 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 it matters a lot. So just talk. Not everybody's going to try to recruit you, even if you just have questions, right? It's really easy to get those answered if we can't answer them. Why don't we walk them through a timeline? Yeah, actually, I think the best thing to do right now is give them like an overview, a bit more of an overview like of our programs in general, and then what day-to-day -day life looks like for us. We'll start with you. So like we'll just keep going back to life right now? Yeah, pretty much. Before you do that, can I give this to Mrs. Ward? Oh, you want to pay for these ones? Nice. <laughs> yeah, those are red guys. A plus two is a big part of the pocket. Yes. You can fit anything in these things. We can qualify to be actually a Okay. 
Okay, so at the Naval Academy, pretty much plebe year is going to be the hardest year that you go through. Um, during the week, it's just kind of tedious. You, you don't read media. Um, you have to like wear the certain PT gear. You got to have your shirt tucked in. You got to walk in the middle of the hallway all year. It's just like stuff like that to kind of like get you to conform to their standards. Um, but pretty much what a regular day in the academic year, plebe summer aside, uh, you wake up and you have a morning workout with like the rest of the plebes and like your training staff. So that would be like a morning workout, say 5, 5.30. You come back, you go to formation. And then right after formation, you go to breakfast. Uh, breakfast with your squad and your company, uh, that's like a really nice thing uh, to be a part of. Uh, you spend all the time with your class, you get really close with them. And then uh, you go to your classes, you have like four periods. Um, it's kind of like here, there are 50 minute classes, but you only have four periods, and then lunch, and then a big block of time after lunch. So if, if you don't play a sport, uh, you tend to have like trainings. Uh, so trainings can be like common courtesy to like uh, making up a, a professional knowledge exam or something like that. And then if you play a sport, you can actually uh, practice with your team. So like if anybody wants to play like football, basketball, like uh, soccer, baseball, anything there, like you would train with your team, get a lift in, go work out. And then you would have two more periods after uh, that set period, and then you would go to a actual practice, which is sports period. So from say 3.20 to like 5.30, 6, 6.30, that time's just allotted with you to go with your team. So that's like kind of the best time for a player to just kind of be a part of something, be a part of a team. You, don't want, you really don't want to be that guy to like sit in his room and not do anything, you know? So it's good to like get out there and be a part of something else. Even if it's not a team, even if you're like in like the drum and bugle corps, just good to be a part of something. So then once you come back from sports, you have dinner. Uh, that's where you can be with your team, your company mates, uh, whatever. And then after dinner, you would go back on deck and you pretty much just do your homework until uh, TAPS comes up. So TAPS is pretty much a sheet of paper saying that you are on deck and you're staying on deck and you're going to be going to bed. Like you're not going to be leaving. So once you sign that paper, you can just go to bed and start the next day. Yeah, so the Navy ROTC, it's a lot more civilian integrated. So uh, you lead like a civilian life with ROTC on the side, I guess I would say. But you're still very busy. So I'll give you what a normal Wednesday would look like for me. So I get up at about 0, 0430, um, and then we go to drill. So we have drill from 5 in the morning to about 730. Then we have naval science class from 730 to 9. And then I have my civilian classes, so say calculus and physics. I'll have that from about 9 in the morning to about noon. And then I'm on the track team at University of Rochester, so from 12 to 2.30, I'll have track practice. Then I'll have about like 45 minutes just downtime, like get ready for the next event. And then I have a ROTC lab, which goes about three hours from 3.30 to 6.30. And then for the rest of the day, I'm back to the civilian life, if you will, and kind of just chilling out. I would say you get pretty busy, but you're as busy as you want to be when you're in RTC. So I decided to take a STEM major. I decided to do art or to do track, and it stacks up a lot. But I know a lot of people in RTC that kind of just take their classes. They focus. They go to PT in the mornings. They go to drill on Mondays and Wednesdays, and that's pretty much all their RTC responsibilities. So it's what you make of it, I guess, is what I would say. Yeah. So. ROTC, it's the same thing for Army ROTC. You get what you put in. So if you want to immerse yourself into ROTC, I don't know how it is for you guys. Well, I know it's different for you. But um, I go to Clarkson. It's a private college. It's not a military school. Um, so I know kids who go to PT in the morning, and they go to drill on Thursday or lab on Thursday, and then they're done. Like, that's it. And then I know people like, I kind of chose the go all in route. I was going to say something else, but go all in route. Um, and I was on the Ranger team, which, do we, do we have that here anymore? Or, oh, the Raider team? Yeah, I know. No, I'm going to start it up again. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's just like Army physical competitions, right? So it's running with a ruck on. It's, you know, what is climbing a on a rope. You'll find out. Um, <laughs> How long is a ruck is a big backpack that you put a lot of stuff in, and then you make it really heavy, and you go on. You carry like another marches. person in your back. Yes, yeah, it's, it's yeah. not fun. Um, but you know, we we just every morning that was six days a week. Five thirty was the start time, so <coughs> that sucked. First semester, bit off a little more than I could chew. Um, but there's different levels of involvement, so. A typical day now after Ranger Challenge season would be, I'll give you my, my Wednesday, and then Thursday is lab. So Wednesday morning, I get up at about 5. PT starts at 5.50. 
Um, so we go from 5.50 to about 7.30. Everybody goes back, they get uh, breakfast together, the whole battalion, there's only like 60 of us, so it's a close-knit, small group. Um, we get breakfast, and then everybody kind of parts ways. They do their, their class thing during the day. You know, you go to bed whenever you're done with your homework. Thursday, around 3 o'clock is when lab usually starts. So lab is, we're very lucky at Clarkson at least, we have a ton of land, because we're in the middle of nowhere, to run around with guns. So we get to run around campus with rubber duckies, we call them fake guns. And we run lanes every Thursday for three hours. So what is the lane? Good question, but I'm getting to that. Um, lanes are basically battle drills. So there's six different lanes that we run, at least. Um, I don't know, I'm off the top of my head. But for example, you would run, say, like an ambush, right? So you'd have, you'd carve a couple guys out of the battalion. you say, hey, you're the enemy today. So you go stand in a spot. Usually we use the Air Force kids, actually, as the enemy. We just throw them in the woods somewhere. Um, and all of the upperclassmen, so the juniors, I'm going to plan how that, say we're doing an ambush, how that ambush is going to go, how you're going to execute all of the orders of operations that you have to do. Um, so it's just a time for them to practice and get ready for camp, which is when they actually, I guess, that's their basic training, which would be between junior and senior year. So it's really just, a, yeah, we'll, we'll touch on that. But it's really just a time for them to kind of learn, I guess. But Anyway, that's three hours, and then you're done again. So Monday, Wednesday, fr Friday is PT, and then I have lab on Thursdays. All right. Um, so you're probably starting to notice a general trend here. Generally, the standards for RTC, you'll do PT with your battalion. Usually, it's like three days a week, um, and then you'll have meal lab or like an afternoon drill where you run those lanes and such. Um, your so your freshman year and your sophomore year. For the most part, you're kind of just learning. You're being taught, you're learning a lot of the basics. Sophomore year, you're getting a little bit more leadership experience. Maybe you get like an ASL, like assistant squad leader spot, you're helping out the juniors a bit. For the most part, you're just a sponge. You're absorbing information. Your MS3 year is where, as a junior, that's where things really start to pick up. You start to take a lot more responsibility. You start to get some um, platoon leader experience, some platoon sergeant experience. Um, and you're the one that's really running the lanes. Um, so you're the one conducting the ambush, conducting the raids, um, setting up patrol bases and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, your MS4 year, after you go to camp, so camp is really up to that point, an assessment of everything you've learned. And that's another thing that goes into, depending on your performance at camp, it's another thing that will influence where you wind up on the OML, what influence where um, you may end up branching in the future. So if you do really, right, so if you, if you do really, really well at camp, you show you're a real high-speed cadet, you got a really good chance of going, like, again, infantry and active duty, if that ends up being, or just like picking and choosing where you want to go. Um, and then as an MS4, you're kind of more of a mentorship to the threes, at least in my program. It's the same for us. Yeah. So you've kind of heard Merv touch on it a little bit. My program's a little bit different. Um, but I think before I kind of get into that, um, while we're all in Army RTC, the difference between our, like, we have very, very different programs, all three of us. Like, Merv's experience at Clarkson, being Ranger Challenge was much different from mine at Norwich, Army RTC, Corps of Cadets, and in the Mountain Cold Weather Company, which was different than Nolan's at RIT. So there's a lot of, like, everything's run a lot differently. There's so much more. There's a lot of different nuances between the two, even though they're, or between the three, even though there's a lot of solid baseline stuff that makes sense. The core curriculum is the same for you guys. It's all the same. But it depends on what school you are. There's different the programs in house programs they've adopted. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. you might have like a Raider thing. You guys might be more like a technical school yeah. where, you know, so no one if you could if you could sum yours up in uh, sixty seconds or so. Yeah. We can be able we'll have enough time to give these guys about five minutes to ask the questions. Yeah, so I'll just run through mine. Um, it's pretty brief. They've touched on just about everything. Just 
So you guys are in the loop. MS stands for Military Science. That's why they say MS1. It's a Military Science Level 1. When you go to ROTC, you will graduate. At least, I believe that's the same, I'm not sure for you, with a minor in Military Science. So, um, I don't know. If you're taking MS classes, you do. You should. But that's, okay. I graduated with, with a minor in Military <laughs> Science. I'll just say that. That's what MS stands for when they say MS1. Um, for mine, we have PT Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They like to get us nice and up into sunny Rochester. The winds are usually about 45 degrees at 5 in the morning. Our first formation is at 0445. So um, it's a nice wake up call every morning. But uh, yeah, that's about it. We have lab on Friday. It's pretty much the same. For us, it's a little different. We're smaller than his school for sure. He's my, my army, the amount of kids at my school that are in Army OPC is about the size of CBA. It's okay. about, it's over, it's like 550 kids Okay, so. so yeah, we're about, I was telling of about 120, so. Uh, first year, again, just a sponge. Second year, you become a squad leader. Uh, basic responsibilities, like your first year, loss is uniform, go handle it. Third year, you become a PSG or a platoon leader. Uh, you rotate in and out to get leadership experience. And then the fourth year, you're running the program for everyone, so. Uh, very similar to all that, the expectations are pretty high, um, it's pressure, but you know, I, I'm not going to go into it too much. Uh, let's open up for some questions, I'm sure you guys have some. We've been talking a lot at you. Is and anybody thinking about going Army RTC, looking at any of the academies? Or Marines, or Air Force, or anything. Not just talking. Thinking about it? Mm -hmm. Thinking about it? What do you guys, what's your guys' thoughts right now? Air Force? Oh, sure. I could talk to you more about that. I have my girlfriend as well. If you want to go Air Force, just come find me after class. We can have a quick chat if you want. I can get it burned up. So what's the other hands? What are we looking at? Three other hands. Okay, look at me. All right. So that's your guy. Uh, on, you to go Air Force or Army. Army, the Okay. Okay. Again, if you want to talk, I'll, I'll talk with you two about Air Force if you'd like. Army or Navy? Army or Navy? So I have, a, I have a question for you guys. Maybe these guys just don't know to ask it. Well, you guys are in college in an ROTC program, right? So you guys pretty much got a free ride, right? So when you graduate, you have no college debt, correct? I get paid to go to school. Yep. That's what's going to be my, yep. my... Yeah, we're netting about... We get payments every single month, so I know for my program, I'm going to net about fifteen to $20,000 just in monthly payments for ROTC. So it's a pretty good deal. Really so yeah, so so you guys are basically going to college for free, and you guys get paid to go to college, correct? Right? Yep. Yeah. So I get four hundred twenty a month and six hundred dollar book stipend every semester. Now I don't spend any of that on stuff that I'm supposed to, but I do get that money. Right. Two hundred. So it might not. It, so it might not sound a lot for you guys four hundred twenty dollars a month, right? When you're in college, that's a lot but, of money. But when you're in college and you're in, your, and you're in a dorm and you get three square meals a day at, at the college, um, it, it does. Can you guys work uh, yeah. off post as well? I can touch on that if you'd like. I, I know we all did a lot of research in Scotia. So basically, yeah, you can work. You, you're basically a civilian. You can do whatever you want. Um, I mean, you can't, like, you get drug tested, so you can't literally do whatever you want. You know, you got to be smart about it. You can't speed, you know, you can't, you know. You still have to follow the law, it's not like, obviously. Um, but as, as for scholarships, the 420 sounds like something, but I'll tell you, at least for RIT, it cost 70 last year, now it's, they upped it, so it cost 75 grand, so it's like, oh, it's only 420 a month. Like, no, like, my scholarship breakdown is literally, like, nearly 500 grand in value. Um, so, and that's the biggest reason we're here talking to you guys, because this isn't a decision that you can make going, like, like for the seniors right now, for some of them it's going to be too late for scholarship. And it's, it's sad to say that, but it's the truth. So you don't need to make the decision now, you don't need to make it next year. But I'd say in your junior year, it's time to really decide. And you don't need to decide to join, but you need to decide that it's time to talk to a recruiter, it's time to talk to someone, and it's time to get like serious about it. Um, there is research that goes into it, there's different kinds of scholarships. Uh, me and him are a Minuteman that's reservist. He is. Going into active, if I'm correct, or do you have a choice? I have a choice. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. You're just, you're just, what? You're the, you're the academy, so you're just yeah. full ride regardless. Yeah, so the academy, like, they pay for everything. Any, like, like any uniform you have, like, we get paid, uh, like, a monthly stipend, and we also get health pay. So any, like, future needs that we may have, like, they, they'll take it out of health pay, or if we get, like, paid extra, like, 
to pay off like a certain like ace loan down the future, like second class year. They'll put in your hell pay, and when you get out, you're just going to get a massive sum of money instead of being in uh, insane debt. So it's just like Nolan was saying, it's just a really good thought to have. Um, it's better to leave college with owing nothing and having a big sum of money than owing four hundred thousand dollars. Especially know. right now, look up the tuition of your dream school and you'll probably cry. Yeah, mine's about eighty six a year. It's not fun. And I don't. It's not a dream school. So <laughs> I was paid eighty six. Yeah, and it's one less thing you guys got to worry about. I mean, when you guys get to that point in your life, you guys are gonna graduate high school, go to college, right? When you graduate college, the first thing you're gonna have to worry about is job, paying off your college, and now maybe a family and a mortgage, right? So these guys are going to graduate with zero owing anybody anything from college and the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they're already ahead of the game. If they wanted to go and buy a house, they could start, they could start on a mortgage right away. You know what I'm saying? So big things like that. They do have a lot, of, so they have a lot of health care options, too. Well, are, you, are you guys, do you guys have, um, uh, tracker? Not yeah, yet. That's when, when you commission. Yeah, that's good. All right. Don't take care of you if you get hurt. Don't take care of you. Yeah, so right now, for, right now, they have basically free health care, you know, for the next four years they're in college. You got to pay for health care today. So it's not, it's not totally free, right? You, you have to serve, serve afterwards. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. Not a, that's not a burden. Like, no, yeah, it's I, not. I do this thing for free, you know, like I want to fly F-18s for the Navy. And I mean, I do that. I pay them to let me do that. So the fact that they're going to pay me pretty good salary and they're going to pay for my school and I'm going to have a fun time while doing it. That's probably one of the flying super sunny mm -hmm. jets. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like a good time. Right? Do it because in the advice that I would give all to you, especially the guys that are looking at doing it, it's nice to get paid. Like, we're all talking up here, we go to college, we get paid to go to college. That's awesome. Do it because you want to do it, do it because you want to serve. If you do it for the money, you're going to have a miserable time. I, was and gonna I say, know some people who are having a miserable time for that reason. If yep. this isn't something that you actually want to do, don't do it because you are going to have kind of this lifestyle right afterwards for eight years whether you do reserves and you have one weekend of you know year basically yeah. Yeah. or guard or active duty you are going to have some sort of you know uncle sam yeah figure in your life so if this isn't you know if you don't have a, a calling i guess to serve if this isn't something that you would do without getting paid to go to school yeah. right like i know i would have just enlisted if i didn't get it on that. So. so yeah, you can, if you don't have like the calling to serve, you can join it as like a club. He's talking about once you sign the, once you sign your name, you're in. Once your contract That's, that's you the army. Contract. You sign your yeah. life away. You can join ROTC as a walk-on and try it. You can try it um, for, it's different, I believe for us, it's you can go up to your three year kind of. I don't know what the dropout rate for you guys is. Yeah, so uh, basically what you meant was like the contract signing. So for I know for Sean, it's one for eight. You have a year of trial at the academy. It's two for seven. So you have two years to like live submerged in the life of the Naval Academy. And before you sign that paper, you can be like, actually, this is not for me. You walk away. You don't own exactly. Anything. You kind of just spent two years of your life in that atmosphere, but you don't own any money. So once you sign that paper, you're right. you're, um, yeah, you're know, kind of like a property of the Navy officially now. You know. So um, plenty of opportunity to make the decision. Um, think about it if you're. If you're even like hesitant, I would apply. Think about it because there's really no, you're not locked in until you sign that piece of paper. So our numbers up on my phone. You guys keep going. Of course. Yeah. We're gonna write yeah, our numbers. Anybody have any board. questions like about of what like our tr our initial trainings were like, the beat downs or like what the application process is like for you here? Well, you can you can erase that stuff. What? You can erase that stuff. What do you think is the biggest part of the naval? Most important thing that I should have on the nomination. Uh, the nomination is huge, um, but I would say definitely have good grades because if you don't have good grades, like you're going against, I think uh, our year when we applied last year, there was probably 25 to 30 people in our class from our congressional area. There was a lot of people. So you're competing against like all these like super motivated kids from other schools. So um, I'm sure you can interview well, like if you're physically fit. But like, if you have good grades, you just want to, you, you don't want that to be the thing that kills you. It's something that's like, probably in your most control right now, you know? And the, and a big thing real quick too, I'm, I'm sorry, and a big thing real quick too, you guys might not think that gold, that little tiny gold star you guys wear in your uniforms, that little, that tiniest thing on your blue. That means something. It's oh. probably the 
the most useful tool you guys will have to do any of this. So I have something to add to that. Mm -hmm. um, I went and I actually did, I got lucky enough to do an inspection of school, trying to get their gold star, so they didn't have it, but they wanted it. I know last year when I was applying to West Point, I didn't get it, obviously, but um, I was able to get a nomination before I got a senatorial nomination. I got a nomination from CBA. So it is a direct, um, it is, there's, there's a ranking, I guess, of nominations, right? So it goes president, vice president, senator, congressperson. And then there's service connected and ROTC, JROTC nominations. So it is at the bottom, but that is, if you can't get one from your congressperson. It checks the box. It checks the box, yes. So that is huge. And I don't know when your next inspection is, but. Uh, we're coming up uh, next year in April. I would it's definitely. called our JPA. So the JPA involves <coughs> Our brigade comes, sends an inspector down, and they inspect everything. So you guys know when you guys um, do the some of the mandatory stuff. I think you guys do like uh, uh, what's some of the mandatory stuff? Let me out here. Cadet portal. Where you guys do cadet portal. The stuff you guys do on Conover. Remember the Conover thing we had to do. So those are mandatory things. And then some of the things that I had you guys submit. Well, we haven't done it yet, but we're gonna get there is your own two personal things like uh, papers you've written, right? So what happens is we gotta make sure that we touch our curriculum. So I had to teach you guys military time as ninth graders. I had to teach you guys um, the phonetic alphabet. You guys had to go over the, over the, um, the creed. Those types of mandatory things, they come in and check. So they check on you guys in your folder. You guys have to meet all the criteria that we're teaching what we're supposed to be teaching you guys. Um, and then we get inspected on our supplies. You guys get inspected on how you guys look in uniform, right? On haircuts. We get inspected on administrative stuff. Awards, are we having award ceremonies? Are we having military balls? Um, do you guys have everything you guys need as far as uniform stuff? There are schools that fail that and they get what they call a blue star. That means that they, if you guys wanted to go to any type of, if you guys wanted to go to Annapolis, West Point, Air Force Academy, things like that, guess what you guys got to do? You guys have to find is who knows the senator. You might not be getting your packet signed. They're hard to reach. Right? You will get a blue star. If you got a gold star, that little tiny gold star you guys wear, that authorizes me or Sergeant Reeves to sign off in that place of that senator. It goes in your packet. So when they look at it and say, hey, what center did you have signed this? Yeah. Oh, never mind, you're a gold star, you're a HUD school, honor unit of distinction, right? So we get inspected on that. If we fail our inspection, if we don't do our jobs with you guys, like the way we bark at you, make you guys be quiet in formation, make you march the way you're supposed to march, and we fail, you guys lose that opportunity. So every year we get inspected in April for that gold star. Um. The marching thing, you just said something, which kind of like reminded me. So when I first got to school, they teach you how to march. So in ROTC, you don't march, right? Like, we don't do that. Um, for formation Army. march. Oh, for, for, for Army, for sorry. Army. Air Force, you better like to march if you join the Air Force. Yes. So marching in Army ROTC is basically non-existent. So they teach you the basic, you know, facing movements, right? It is funny to see some of these kids try to do it, right? Watching an about face from a kid who just does not belong there is so funny. So we get, you know, every year we have like six kids drop out. So we had like four or five drop out. There was one kid we called the princess who's trying it out. He tried it out freshman year, but it was COVID and he came back and he hated it, right? I just remember my first day of ROTC knowing how to do an about face, knowing how to do a right and left face. Super easy, you would think, right? Watching this kid try to do an about face and almost falling over, it made my year. Like, I still remember it. It was like the third day of school. It's just, I don't know, it's so very funny. You guys, are way, you guys are way ahead of the game by the time you, you get really to that. Are. If you think that you guys get to that point, it does. there's probably young, young men or young adults, like, like Jack was saying, they couldn't even do an about face. But you guys have to do that type of stuff on a daily basis every day when we have inspections, when we have brigade formations. They can barely do left and right faces. So like it's yeah. it's it's bad.
at the Naval Academy, so over sleep summer, drill's a big component, you're doing that every day. And if you don't know how to do it and you can't figure it out, you put a target on your back. They're just gonna rip you apart, they're gonna drop you, they're gonna make you wish you knew how to do drills. Yeah. So coming in, knowing how to march, knowing how to just, even doing column marches, that's like rocket science to some people. And like, then they get, they have to sit in the front leading rest for like a half an hour. It's not worth it, but like you guys, that's something that's like a bread and butter. You, you know how to do that. It's not even a thing. So like, if you know how to march there, they don't bother you. It's kind of like downtime for you, you know. So just if any of you are thinking about it, it's still a good skill to have and kind of take seriously here. Just want to mention, um, we are down one. We're supposed to come to Jonah Door. Uh, he's a West Point cadet, so if anyone is interested in West Point, take this number right here. Shoot him a text. He's a very nice man. He's very helpful. Uh, he was supposed to be here, but his tax did not agree, so he's not here. He's uh, still at the point. Yeah, he's still down yeah. there. So. And believe me, I was stationed there for nine months one time as cadre, and that's the only place I know where you can start up in the morning running uphill and finish running uphill. Oh, West Point? Oh, yeah. West Point. You haven't been to Northfield, Vermont. <laughs> oh, Oh, I can imagine you mountain guys are there. The question's pretty rough, too. Anybody have any, any questions at all? Sadiq, you ain't got no questions? <laughs> Mayor Pody, you're a big Navy guy, man. You out of questions? I, I would have thought you had at least 10. I watched his uh, video on, how, on his. Uh, okay, so is anybody video. other than Mayor Pody interested in the Navy? If you are interested in the Navy or the Marines, get with Mayor Pody, and he can give you Ryan Hotelling's website where you can look and probably have 99% of your questions asked, right? What aircraft are you guys interested in flying? It's whatever you qualify for. <laughs> yeah. It's probably not going to be our choice. It's going to be whatever. As much as like you'd like to say, like yeah, I'd like to fly the black or whatever, but like Apaches. Yeah. It ultimately is like you're not going to really need to be flying an Apache around like the Sketchy Reserve Base. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to defend. So. <laughs> I get lucky with a Chinook. Yeah, it depends what? on how good of a flyer you are. And it, everything you do depends on what they need. If we go into war, they're going to start sending everyone to infantry. It, right now, we're kind of chilling, so we're not doing anything. So right now, they're doing more logistics. But you'll find as you develop, like you have to keep up. You have to be geopolitically aware. Because if we go into war, like you're probably just going to go infantry. They're not going to. So for Jack, Jack, you're actually kind of pretty unique. Jack and, and Brian, I think, um, being so close to Drum, Clarkson does a lot of the training at an active duty Army base at Fort Drum. So you'll probably have a, once you get that far with school, probably as a junior or senior, you will probably have the opportunity to do Wheeler Sack, Wither, uh, Wither Sack Army Airfield. They might have something with Clarkson where they go over there. So we have every year, <coughs> um, at least one cadet get aviation. Um, and, uh, and they have and they have ranges of aircraft. Guys. So they have the Kiowa. They have the Longbows. They, they have, have everything. The Apaches. You, yeah, you drive by that airfield. It's just airplanes and helicopters for as far as you can see. And, and I envy you aviators guys too because it's many helicopters, different types of helicopters I've been in before in combat and not. I can't imagine being able to fly this. So. At the Naval Academy, right, the jobs we have here are squad leader, assistant squad leader. How do you get those positions at the Naval Academy? So every billet, um, they, you start getting more billet opportunities as a, so billet's like a job, pretty much. So like, brigade commander here, uh, brigade XL, that's like a billet, you know, that's like a, like a job that you help hold in the brigade of midshipmen. Um, and there's more billets open up, uh, coming like your sophomore, or it's called youngster year, your third class year. Um, <clears throat> and there's more like training opportunities, there's more like uh, admin billets, but like once you get towards like second class year, uh, first of the year, that's when you can really like be a squad leader, be a platoon leader, be a company commander. Um, and all you have to do for that is you go and like once there's, they send out emails for every job opportunity that there is. So like company commander interviews going up, this week, and you just put your name pretty much in a Google sheet, and you show up to this board and like the highest interview possible. So like, if there 